Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentle jammers, to the Chupacabra's Lair. We're back for some more early access action here from some indie developers, or a indie developer, with Disputed Space, which is a $5 title made by Shiloh Games that promises to take us into epic, vast star battles that are procedurally generated in the depths of space to presumably save humanity from some manner of evil alien invaders. Uh, I checked this game out because it was cheap and I figured I might as well just buy a game during the Steam Summer Sale, back when it was only like available for like a dollar or two. And when I booted it up, I noticed that this game actually looked like a prototype for a game I played an eternity ago with this spaceship here, the space station. Which makes me wonder if this is the same developer or if this is just a really popular stock asset that people get a lot. Uh, either way, that one was about controlling fleets. This one's about controlling a singular small starship in a battle. So I'm going to click new. We're just going to go to, I guess, slot one. We're going to play in arcade normal mode. And that's about it, really. I guess we're warping in. Earth is under attack. Whoa. Well, okay. We are having a heck of a time. So there is an enemy bomber. Where's Earth? Uh, oh, hello, Earth. How are you? How the kids? Looks like you're a bit fu more full on people than the last time we met. Good for you. Looks like we're over Europe right now. Um... I guess we just have to blast away at these ships. Which one? Okay, there's the enemy bomber. Let's uh, use right click to launch a couple of missiles. And essentially all you really have to do in this game at present, in its current stage of development, is you blast ships in zero G and you try not to explode ostensibly. Then you rinse, repeat, and do it again. You explode, you die, you blow up other things and make them explode, etc, etc, so on and so forth. Now, one thing I can say is this game can feel a smidgen overwhelming at present. Where there's just an ass ton of enemy vessels here that you can select from to shoot. While at the same time, it doesn't necessarily feel like you're having any major impact on the battle. Like, it just kind of seems like you're generally involved in a large clusterfuck and that you're just kind of dinking about. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, in a lot of dogfighting simulators that even felt particularly good, that's how I always felt. But at the same time, like, I feel like you could be given a mission with a variety of different ships and guns and weaponry in order to like take out that mothership or take out this capital ship or go and uh, defend this particular ship because right now it looks like we've just been given free range to go and dink around generally in the battle and if you were in a proper strategic immersive military battle i feel like you'd be assigned to a squad of some variety and they would expect you to go out and accomplish a specific mission objective so right now you're just kind of flying around looking at all the cool graphics, looking at all the swanky stuff, and enjoying the fact that it is in fact a quite a bit optimized for modern games and rigs because I'm getting a solid 90 plus FPS, often 120, although down to almost 62 when I'm staring at all these crazy particle effects. So let's go blast the pants off of this alien frigate. All right, got you. And then, I guess this is all just the same kind of design, so these must be human ships. The only difference is they're made out of, like, a different colored material. So I'll just help blast the pants off of these ships. Maybe I can... Can I disable these guns? I wonder how modular the design for this game is. It looks like it's all or nothing for a lot of these vessels. Like, you can shoot the pants out of the gun, but the only thing that'll really happen is eventually the whole ship will just explode. 
But it does look like they kind of have like a texture on the hull to try and indicate that this thing is shielded. And then of course, this is our primary defense station right here that provides all of our tactical support, which is kind of neat. This is definitely the same model of station that I played with before, but the story of that game was you were trying to like defend some settlers at a station in a faraway system from an enemy faction. What is going on with this ship? It's like twitching everywhere. This is not immersive at all. This is just obnoxious. Like I like being able to strafe in a dogfighting game. It makes it easier to play if you're not really familiar with a lot of dogfighting titles, but that is ridiculous. I'm not gonna be able to shoot that down to save my life. So I guess we'll just blow up all these bombers and hope for the best, honestly. Oh, we have exploded. But it doesn't matter, there's more of me to go around. Let's just launch all our missiles. This is just ridiculous. Okay, they're trying to blow up the station. Is there any enemy carriers left? Any at all? This one. This one's a spicy boy. Ah, screw it. I'll just blow up some fighters. It's, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, this doesn't really feel like a dogfight. It just feels like a bunch of alien ships just lazily listing around, shooting at something by bobbing and weaving back and forth in weird directions. Because I can move in all cardinal directions, forward, back, side to side, up, down. I can re rotate and revolve. And my afterburners that kind of jet me forward and faster in a specific location or a specific direction don't seem to give me that much more speed to help me dodge or anything. Huh. So they've got the right idea, I feel, but right now I wouldn't recommend anyone buys this because it looks pretty, but I would chalk that up more to stock feeling graphics than to actual intentional design on part of the developer. The seal is like a very quickly made game that has the components, but at present they're not tied together to do anything interesting. Because I've seen a lot of people make, you know, cheap, quickly made dogfighting simulators, especially on platforms like itch.io or GameJolt, and all of those had a similar control feel to this, unless they were trying to be super realistic, in which case they had a better control scheme if you're looking for, you have to constantly move forward and then do weird zero-g looping maneuvers. So, I don't know. It needs some work. It definitely needs a lot of work before I would say I'd recommend this to just about anybody. How have we... How have we not killed this thing yet? Like, I don't even know what... What is being shot at over here? It's just a wave of murder. Alright, let's just... Uh, let's just actually go after the enemy supercarrier with all of our homing missiles. Is there like a weak spot? That's something you also want to have on something like a super carrier, is I should be able to get up behind it, shoot it in the butthole, and that should be all I need in order to completely annihilate it, to be honest. So come on. Burn, baby, burn. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm almost through the shield, it looks like. That's a big meaty shield, too. Oh, is someone shooting at me finally? Who is it? I think it's you. All right, sounds good. I have what looks to be infinite missiles, so I might as well just go nuts and shoot the shit out of this guy. And from the looks of things, the, the features that were just recently added to this game are things like a score screen to tell you how well you've been doing, which is kind of neat. But this is definitely going to need some procedurally generated story to, to draw you through this game. Because what this honestly reminds me a lot of is the Robocraft games, or not Robocraft, um, Robotech. Where you had those transforming Gundam type jets that could turn into like people and fight with a, with a rifle. Which kind of sounds dumb now that I'm older, but it was cute at the time. And that had like a, not a great story, a kind of generic invasion story, but at least it gave you something to do to kind of explain your objectives and the reason why you were going after certain targets in the game. You also had a little voice in your head in the form of your story narrator lady, 
who would give you instructions as what to do in a mission. Again, it was that immersive component, because in a game like this, you'd probably be attached to a squadron, you'd be assigned a mission or a task, and you'd be expected to accomplish that. You'd be able to shoot the guns off the outside of a gunship, like these super carriers, which would make sense, because that's how you shoot things. And they'd also give you instructions like to disable the communication node on the ship, so that you could prevent it from calling in reinforcements for, like, a sneak attack. You could do all sorts of special missions with different types of single manned ships, but you'd have to program them in. You know, stealth missions is definitely something that comes to mind, and I think that could be something very interesting. Maybe you could go sabotage an enemy base on a planetary surface or on a moon, in case you don't want to model out a huge planet. There's a lot of options here, and I think uh, this is very early. It's hard to tell where it's going to go, but I certainly wouldn't recommend it in its present form. It's kind of fun to derp around in dogfight, but again, there's, you know, there's a dozen different games that allow you that mechanic, so I feel like you can get that in some cases for free or equally cheap in a game with a lot more going on. Like, I know there was the game Celestial Breach that had a lot of this, but they actually had some missions and a bunch more ships that were kind of current feeling, like stealth bombers and the like, so... I don't know. It seems interesting, it's kind of pretty, but... It's kind of boring. You shoot two ships and that's essentially the whole game. You've experienced all there is to experience, and I'm not entirely certain that there is any more. You're just really waiting for this gigantic station with all these humongous guns to finish bombarding the shit out of the last carriers. And also for these little spazzy enemy fighters to finish dying. That also helps. I liked it better when I was playing that other game where you had, like, a fleet of ships to control in an RTS fashion. Because at least with that game, you had the ability to assign them to automatically aim and do their own things. So you could strategically coordinate what vessels you wanted to kill when, but in this case, it's just kind of a massive clusterfuck of zero coordination. The AIs just kind of go after whatever the closest enemy target is. So what is still alive? Is this a bunch of enemy fighters? Obviously. Okay, is anything left alive, physically? Just, just the fighters, alright. Well, I think that's probably it for this game. Uh, it's interesting. This has been Disputed Space. It's available for $4.99, $5 on Steam Early Access. I would wait. It's pretty, but there's not a lot to do. Um, I would go as far as to not recommend it because it doesn't feel especially immersive. It just kind of feels like a clusterfuck. So until next time, I've been your host, Larry. This has been Disputed Space, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody.